Well, hello there, and welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. My name is Kenneth McCoy, your host, and yet today I have another car review. This time is the 2023 Genesis Electrified GV70. A beautiful, beautiful vehicle, and I'm trying to get this filming in early before the sun really heats up because it's already warm today. So I'll try to get through this as quick as I can. First, I want to thank Genesis Canada, of course, for allowing me the use of this lovely press vehicle here. Uh, this uh, brand new vehicle only has got a couple thousand kilometers on it for review. So sit back, relax, let me tell you all about the Electrified GV70 and how good it is. So the Electrified GV70 is the third fully electric vehicle in Genesis young lineup so far. Remember folks, they've only been going for about nine or 10 years now. They've already got three fully electrified vehicles in their lineup with a goal to be fully electrified, I believe by the end of this decade, by 2030. And they're well on, on the right pathway in the road to electrification with this product as well. Now the GV70 is their best selling vehicle by far for the Genesis brand. So it made perfect sense to take that and fully electrify it. Take some components from that eGMP platform, which is a great platform, put the batteries, put the motors, tweak it for this vehicle and make it fully electric. So it is based on the GV70 chassis, that the ICE vehicle chassis we see today. So from a design element, I love it, you know, keeps with the Genesis brand, right? You got the nice, nice big grill, you got all the markings for Genesis. It really is a minimalistic design, yet very dynamic. It looks like it wants to just take off standing there. It's got this aggressive nature to it, yet in a very subtle and classy way. I love it, love it, love it. It really is, you know, they are a luxury brand, folks, and it, it you know, the design is, they say it's athletic and dynamic. Um, it really has that sense of, of, of power yet refinement. And it, it is that identity that Genesis wants people to stick with, that athletic elegance. And I think those are a couple of great words. You know, it's a very classy looking vehicle, yet very purposeful that you could take it camping, you can take it shopping, you can take the kids to soccer practice, whatever the case may be, yet it'll look just as home at the opera parking lot or a uh, beautiful theater or dance recital or whatever. Very, very good done. So again, they've got that signature crest grill, very aerodynamic, that G matrix pattern as well. There's a hidden charging port, which I'll show you in a sec. And then that rear, you know, the minimalistic horizontal shape of the bumper, it's really modern. Um, I like it. I've got some looks on this vehicle, even though the GV70s are out there. I mean, it looks pretty well the same as the internal combustion version of the GV70, just with the closed grill. There's no grill in here, so it's a closed bumper and no exhaust ports, right? So you don't have the, the tip sticking out of the bumper and the openings there for the exhaust ports. So they've done a great job of, of, of um, you know, adding those components, taking or taking them away to make it electrification. And, you know, it has that, again, that that's a tailpipe free skid plate which if you look closely, there's no badging to show that this is electrified on it. So it's just GV70, just like the normal GV70s. And a lot of people like that. So just finishing up on the design, again, I love the front and the rear of these, the nice big lights. The, the lights work really, really well on this vehicle with these, uh, again, with that matrix pattern, the two line quad lamps, they look really sharp and they work. They're very purposeful and functional, all that kind of stuff. So just the elegance and the sculpture of it, is really nice and the big tail lamps in the back where you can't miss when you're braking nice big high brake light and big turn signals so i really like the visibility aspect i mean it's not a hard vehicle to miss especially in this red color but you know more safety and more lights and the more uh, visibility options that people can see you with the safer you'll be all right, so if we dive into the specifications on this vehicle, it's gonna sound very familiar with a lot of the other Genesis vehicles. This is using the 77.4 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery pack that we see the other vehicles use in the Genesis uh, all electric lineup. This is a dual motor all wheel drive. It comes in one package. It's the prestige all wheel drive. That's it in Canada. So it's a nice, easy, simplified order process. You just pick your color and basically that's it. And even the pricing, which I'll talk about at the end is kind of a one pricing format, which makes it really easy because you get everything with this vehicle. So I mentioned the dual motors uh, produces 320 kilowatts of combined power on those. They're, they're 50, 50 split motors, which is nice. Gives this uh, vehicle a pretty 50, 50 balance ratio. 
but it does pump out a combined 429 horsepower or 516 pound-feet of torque, which is great now as Genesis has. They have this boost button on them on all their models, so you can get up to about 10 seconds of uh, a lot more power than you need, I'll tell you that. Um, and that'll actually give you 483 horsepower for 10 seconds. So combine that with the torque, boy, this thing is a rocket for being a big vehicle, uh, a mid-size SUV, but it goes like stink, which is, you know, the same. It's just the characteristics of all electrics now that we've grown to love. So for charging the battery pack, one thing I do, I mentioned earlier about that hidden charge port. It's here in the front of the Genesis and I like that because it makes it real easy to charge. As you can see, you just pop this open and you have your combined ports here. So you have two tabs that you have to pull out for this, uh, giving you your CCS combo port, of course, the J1772 and then the high power settings. As standard with the South Korean platforms, this Genesis does support up to 350 kilowatts of DC fast charging. Um, so they do have the same verbiage that the other uh, Kia and um, Hyundai products have and the other Genesis EVs, of course, in that, in that 800 volt architecture of 10 to 80 percent in just 18 minutes. And if you watch my Ionic 6 video that I did a few weeks ago, where I actually went to a fast charger and put that claim to the test, you will see that they are making the claims and it works. So I fully anticipate that this would be a similar outcome in a fast charging environment. So we talk about uh, charging, of course, and battery size. What's the range on this? Well, the EPA rated range is 383 kilometers and the EPA efficiency is at 23.0 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. Now I can tell you, I'm doing better than that from an efficiency, which is no surprise. And I'm getting better than that range in the first couple of charges that I've done and some driving that I've done in this. So I'll have all my range and numbers coming up near the end, so stay tuned for that. But it's a very capable vehicle, and I think the 400 kilometer range is a pretty good number to be looking at when you're considering this vehicle. All right, let's talk about cargo storage before we look at the interior. Now, I've already popped the, the front hood on this, and the reason I'm showing you the front hood is because there actually is some storage on the Genesis uh, product here. Here we go. So it's got 22 liters of frunk storage, which is about three quarters or so of a cubic foot, not even one cubic foot. So it's not a ton, but it's enough. And you know, you just pop, uh, lift up these uh, handles and then it opens up, it's got a light. You know, it's enough for the charging cord or maybe some small items, that kind of stuff. It's got a little bit of a repair kit, tire mobility kit in here as well. So it's a nice place to put that. At least Genesis has done something. Again, when you have all-wheel drive models, when you have those, or front-wheel drive, where you have the motors up front, it does take up a lot of room. So Tesla. All right, so we would expect a generous amount of cargo storage here. Now, one thing that's cool is that the button to open this, or you can use a key fob, of course, and a button on the dash, but to come into the back, the button to open this is not down here as we would think, down on the hatch. The camera's down here. It's actually built into the uh, the rear wiper here, which is cool. It's just a button here you push and of course you'll get that activation on the power trunk and of course it's height adjustable and all that kind of stuff. And there's speeds that you can set to fast, slow or medium. Pretty good uh, cargo volume space with the uh, behind the second row as you see it here, you get 29 cubic feet of room or about 813 liters. If I put the two uh, rows down, the 70-30 split there for those rear seats down, it'll uh, increase it to um, 56 and a half cubic feet or about 1,601 liters of cargo space. That's pretty good. Uh, I really, really do like that. Now, one thing I also like again are these lower flat floors here, those lower floors makes lifting, we did a grocery run, makes lifting and unloading things uh, very nice and easy. And I'm glad to see the OEMs do that. Um, it does have a very small sub frunk area here that you can lift up and it's really just compartmentalized for some other accessories. Of course, you've got the vehicle to load technology. You've got the actual tonneau cover here can store here if you don't want to put it on there. Otherwise you can uh, hook it up and have your cover to hide what's in here as well. I just left it stored for the few days. Uh, nice big opening, of course, easy to put stuff in. So it's a good size for a mid-size SUV. They've done a good job. So let's see how the interior uh, space is in the rear. Again, pretty good size opening doors to get in and out. You've got a little bit of a cutaway here that you're gonna have to be careful. It's not as deep as some others who might have a bigger opening. Uh, again, the roof line remains fairly high here, which is nice. This also has roof rails. So you can add uh, roof attachments to this if you'd like. So let's see getting in here. Yeah, pretty nice. Don't have to duck too low. I have the seat where I, I usually have it. I have one fist of space for the knees and just over a fist of space for my headroom. Very comfortable. 
uh, nicely pointed. Uh, these rear seats do re go up and they do recline uh, fairly far, probably, oh, about 30, maybe 20 degrees or so. Um, then you can go straighter, you can go really straight like that. So you can move it around and get comfortable, which is nice. Grab bars everywhere, again, like seeing that. Five, four people comfortably, five people in a pinch. The middle seat's gonna be a little rear, a little tight here, especially for somebody like me, but doable. Again, with that low flat floor that I mentioned earlier, it's nice. And then these little touches here, even though the windows are tinted, they do have the sunshade screens that latch in for the rear seats. So if you have kids, you wanna keep some of the sun and let them sleep, it's a good thing. Overall, very comfortable cabin. All right, now I'll quickly show you the interior and then we'll get to driving. All right, moving inside into the interior, the luxurious interior is equipped with Napa leather steering surfaces, microfiber suede headliner, heads up display, 3D instrument cluster, premium auto, uh, which is Lexicon, which is really nice, active noise control, uh, for the road, it's got heated second row seats and heated steering wheel, manual rear side window shades, as I mentioned, and an exclusive mood lighting treatment. The interior space has been enhanced by lowering the center tunnel to secure an amount of second row space. Inspired by the beauty of white space is what Genesis interior design concept folks are talking about. The electrified GV70 offers customers the opportunity to write their own story in an interior that reflects the sustainable ambitions of this electric vehicle, well, which is really a fancy say, way of saying it's a very nice, subtle uh, interior, very well-built quality, as I mentioned before. Um, no squeaks or rattles, anything like that. Uh, everything is easy to see in the interior. Uh, very, very nice uh, place to be in with good materials, nice soft touch surfaces and everything. The displays are a combination of a 14 and a half inch uh, navigation system for your infotainment screen and uh, your 12.3 inch 3D digital cluster with lots of information on both. Uh, lots of different things that you could pull from these information displays to get EV charging. They use the same card style format that you would have seen in my uh, GV60 and maybe the G80 review. So I encourage you to check those out. But uh, there's a lot of information that you can get. You can customize the placement of those cards, really customize a lot of the display information of what you get to fastest. Uh, supports a lot of different audio streams, including Apple CarPlay and Android Auto as well. So a really nice overall in infotainment system. We went for several drives in this vehicle over the, the few days, and it's quiet, it's comfortable, really easy to manage and drive around, and just an all around, again, excellent interior to be in, especially for longer drives. All right, hope you enjoyed all that stuff. Now, let's go for a quick drive. All right, just some uh, thoughts about the driving. My original footage got uh, corrupted, so I'm just going to try to converse here in the narrative uh, what my thoughts were driving. Overall, it was a great vehicle to drive for a week. It's very quiet, very comfortable, very luxurious, so you're well cared for in that vehicle. I like the, that the acceleration can be slowed down, the deceleration can be slowed down. So it could be for a nice smooth stop and start uh, ride. Handles quite well because of course that lower center of gravity with the batteries. All wheel drive, uh, 20 inch tires gripped really well. Um, all wheel drive as I mentioned, so there wasn't any traction concern, especially in some rainy days that we had this week. Uh, overall, very comfortable. I had family in it and they were very comfortable. In fact, they were even falling asleep because it was so quiet and smooth. We went for a good drive. People were falling asleep. Instrumentation, everything is easy to reach. Uh, storage is abundant. Uh, I'd like maybe a little bit more where the cup holders are to be a little bit bigger, but uh, it works. There is a center storage console. Um, there's a lot of little knickknack areas to put stuff around in the doors and stuff like that as well. Good size glove box. Uh, all the instrumentations within easy reach, easy controls. I, I used iPedal again, so it's just one of those things that you have to always turn on because I didn't set up a profile. I was, uh, uh, maybe it's because it's not linked to a profile, so it wasn't saving my settings, but I was able to run in eco mode. There's di different drive modes. There is that boost button, of course, which just throws you back in your seat for 10 seconds when you enable that. Absolutely no need to use the boost button, in my opinion. It's plenty of fast, especially in sport mode. And I was driving in eco mode all the time, so I was still fast enough to pass people and get up to speed. So it shows you the power of these vehicles, folks, that they handle well, they're smooth, they're, they accelerate very well, and they offer a really, really nice driving experience experience and handling experience um, for those that uh, uh, enjoy luxury vehicles. 
So just showing you the lane keeping and the adaptive cruise control here. Um, I've been driving with it for a bit. It's nice and smooth. It doesn't bother you too much to asking for your hands on the wheel. Uh, one thing I do like is it's a very smooth acceleration and deceleration. It's very nice. Um, they've really softened that up and that was one of my biggest complaints on these systems is that sometimes they'll, uh, especially when it brings you to a stop, if you have it engaged in this kind of traffic where you'll have some light stop and go, um, it, you know, very gently. So here this car just cut in lane and it just very gently eased up on the, you know, hit the, uh, the brakes a little bit and slow down, not this jerkiness that you see in some systems that are pretty abrupt. You know, I have to say Tesla can be pretty abrupt at times. So this is really nice and smooth. I haven't touched the wheel since we started recording this, uh, 30 seconds, 45 seconds now, and it's still keeping in lane, it's keeping the distance, it's keeping the speeds down, it's regulating the traffic flow um, as it should. Uh, really, really nice. I'm gonna be turning up at the set of lights here, so I'm gonna disengage it in a few seconds. But all in all, again, a really nice system. The, the South Koreans have done a good job in building these systems, these um, eight highway driving assist systems, and Genesis has just refined find it to make it that much smoother. One thing I just wanted to mention um, that I said earlier in my driving was that how smooth it is and you can actually uh, even update and change the, the reaction uh, of the uh, smart cruise control here so you can uh, obviously the distance is one thing but the acceleration is one thing I like that middle icon there where you can have fast or slower and that's where you can gauge how fast this vehicle will accelerate um, the when, when it's in automatic cruise control, whether it'll be in a graduated, uh, a nice and easy acceleration or a more abrupt acceleration. And then I think that reverses it for the braking as well. It will apply that feature to the braking so it's not as abrupt and dramatic as sometimes these systems could be. So one thing I wanted to just point out that I've been uh, experiencing and playing with is see some of these settings is it actually works really, really well. And um, uh, Genesis has really refined this. And that's one thing I like about, uh, again, their products is having the ability to just kind of go a little bit more into the systems and customize it for your habits. So hope you enjoyed all the driving. Now, just to wrap that up, you know, as I mentioned, this thing does come with a lot of ADAS systems, uh, safety systems, it has that has all your other stuff, right? Forward collision avoidance, blind spot, all that kind of stuff. It's loaded with pretty well all the sensors you have, even parking, that kind of stuff. So really a good value that you get with this uh, as well with all that stuff. And in addition, there is an app for this that you can use on your smartphones, uh, Android and iOS certified or, or supported. Um, you get a complimentary subscription to this for with Genesis Connected Services. Of course, you remotely monitor the vehicle location, the battery status, range, location, uh, charging stations, locate charging stations, uh, precondition, all that kind of stuff that we normally do for apps. Good to see. I, I haven't had a chance, an opportunity to try the app out on here. They didn't give me any credentials for that. But again, there are a whole slew of apps. It was something you'd have to look at. But it's good that it comes with that and the subscription as well. Just want to quickly show you my driving summary for the uh, week that I had this vehicle. As you can see by the, the spreadsheet, I put on just over 500 kilometers on it. So the actual um, that I actually put on was 514. The projected range when you look at the starting range and the ending range. And I noted the battery percentages from full down to where I stopped it, uh, where I had to recharge. Um, it was uh, very consistent actually and just by chance it happened to be uh, at the same points in time basically for the range uh, projected uh, which was kind of interesting uh, but the, the estimated battery range at that point in time but as you can see so the system projected that I do 578 um, kilometers so I didn't do that it was about 64 off if you it's probably somewhere about the 10 to 11 percent range and that seems to be fine because my uh, overall average as you can see at 18.8 is lower than the epa rating and i really had the ac on a lot of the time we have we've had some hot humid days here uh, heat warnings that kind of stuff so the ac has been running almost non-stop for the week that i've had it so i think that that's really good for the um uh, for the type of driving that i've done so when we look at pricing on the electrified gv70 one thing i like is genesis has made it easy again to buy this it's one package only for this the prestige all-wheel drive it, so it comes with everything and i'll put a list up of a lot of the features that it comes with standard it's eighty four thousand one hundred and fifty dollars you get all this stuff with it it's fully loaded the only thing i couldn't find was massage seats so i love it uh, it's a good price point now when you look at the competition you got the lower end you could say lower end in the model y and maybe the id4 but they're not luxurious um 
They're not luxury SUVs in my opinion. They're capable, but not luxury. So when you go up to that, you know, you could say maybe the fully loaded Aria, you know, at over 70,000 uh, would be a good competitor. This is at that 84, as I mentioned, 150. The only thing extra in that price is taxes. That's it. Everything is in that ship freight PDI, all the other stuff that's usually uh, nickel and dimed are in there. So it makes it nice. It's, it's got the quality of the German builds, certainly super build quality in the Genesis products. They've been outstanding. They're smooth, they're, they're quiet, they're serene. They're just really nice products, all of them that I've tested so far. And this is no exception in the electrified version of the GV70. Of course, again, their GV70 being their best-selling platform. So when you factor this up against some of the Europeans, this costs thousands of dollars less or tens of thousands of dollars less when you start moving up the food chain there. Um, so I think it's a, it's a pretty good, I think it's a really good price point for that. Again, you're not going to get the most range that you might on some of the other models. They might have higher ranges, but you're going to get a really... Um, fully loaded package, very capable, gain tons of speed and power on this thing, and fully loaded and super quiet and comfortable for a good price. So to wrap up my thoughts on this, you know, again, as I said in the driving, it's a really smooth vehicle. It's fully loaded. You get a lot of stuff with it, even with the 20-inch tires, super, super nice. So they've done a good job. Would I recommend this product? Absolutely, I'd recommend this vehicle. Again, I'm, I'm super stoked with Genesis is doing with their build quality, with the amount of appointments and luxurious features that they provide as standard in their vehicles. Sure, they're not um, the lower end price point, but they're not the higher end price point either. And I think they're, they're very, very competitive uh, in what they're coming out. And, you know, hearing that they're going to go all electric by the end of the decade or so is really, really good to hear because they're building fantastic products. So I would encourage you definitely to look at this vehicle if you're in the market for a mid-size SUV, again, you gotta try it out, check the ergonomics, see how everything fits for you, if you like the features and all that kind of stuff, but it's a certainly a 100% quality product and I would n not, not hesitate at all to recommend this to anybody looking at this type of class vehicle. All right, and that's it for this edition of the EV Revolution Show. Hope you enjoyed my thoughts and observations on this 2023 Genesis Electrified GV70 Prestige All-Wheel Drive. I got to get that right because it's a lot of stuff to say. Again, always thankful for the OEMs and for this time Genesis for allowing me the use of this press vehicle for a few days. Really enjoyed it. Uh, quite a pleasure to drive. We had some pretty good rains and stuff here too. So we had some active weather roll through and this thing handled like a dream. So very, very impressed. Again, thank you very much for watching. All my contact information, Patreon, and all my uh, the, the list of Patreon supporters are coming at the end of the show, so stay tuned. You can get all that information there. If you have any questions or comments, please put them in the comments or send me an email, evrevolutionshow at gmail.com. It's that easy. I'd love to hear your feedback. If you have topics you want me to maybe think about covering, all that kind of stuff, I'd love to hear from you. So until the next time, please, everybody stay safe, and I will see you when I see you. Take care and bye-bye.